This is part two of making a cinematic animation in Blender 4.0. If you haven't already seen part one where we do the layout, import our assets, make sure to watch it. But this is part two where we'll be adding some of the grass and stuff like that. And I'm um, doing a few more things to make this look really awesome. And then we'll finish off in part three. So let's jump in. So now that we're in part two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate our camera rotating a little bit to get started with. So let's go Shift A. Let's go to our empty options. Let's add in a sphere. And now that we've added in the empty sphere, we're just gonna go to our top orthographic view. We're gonna go G and let's place it in the middle here, just about this point. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our camera and holding in shift, we're gonna select the empty and we're gonna go Control P or Command P. I'm gonna go object, keep transform. So now if we grab our empty and we rotate it, you can see the camera goes along. So now let's go into our camera view. Let's go to frame one. And with our empty selected, we're gonna press I and we're gonna insert a rotation keyframe. And then we're gonna to go to, and then we're gonna to go to frame 170. And we're gonna go ahead and enable auto keying. And we're gonna go R, Z, and we're gonna rotate like so to about here. It's up to you what angle you want, but let's have a look at that. So this is what we're gonna kind of see. Just some nice slow movement like this. So now we have that rotation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give our camera somewhere to focus. So we're gonna go Shift A again. We're gonna add in another empty, this time a cube. And let's bring it over here as to scale it down. And let's just place it kind of right here in front of the elephant's head like this. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our camera. We're gonna go over to our constraints. We're gonna go add object constraint. And we're gonna go down the track. And we're gonna click on eyedropper and select that empty. And let's come here and I think it's gonna be negative Z. So if you now grab this empty here and you go G to move it, you can see the camera follows along. So now if you go to frame one and we play the space bar, you can see here animation is happening, but it's only gonna focus on where that empty is here. So the cool thing is, is we can come to frame one now, grab enable auto king. And as our camera is moving, we can actually grab this empty here and as it's moving, we can kind of move the empty slightly just so our focus point shifts a little bit, just so it, it makes it look a little bit more natural. So you can do this at random. So just like this and you'll see what difference that makes. We now go to frame one and we've got a little bit of up and down motion there and that's looking really cool. So we want this kind of just nice, slow cinematic look like this. Another thing we can kind of do to top this off is grab our camera and go to frame maybe 20. And on frame 20, we're gonna go G, middle mouse button, just zoom back a little bit. So you can see this now keyframe added for our camera. And then let's play the animation. And let's come to about 140. G, middle mouse button, let's zoom in with our camera. And let's just go all the way maybe to 260 here and then go G, middle mouse button, and just gonna zoom in a lot more like this. And um, just three keyframes should do. So now we have something like this, and our camera is kind of getting a little bit closer. In reality, it's not really zooming because it's not changing the focal length, but it's a kind of moving in closer to the scene over here, um, which looks really cool. So now we have a nice bit of cinematic camera movement here. Um, I think what we'll do next this will add in our little sprite thing here. That the thing that's gonna kind of make this um, really come together or something quite magical. So we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in, I think we're gonna go with a UV sphere. And let's just go G, move it here in the middle, S to scale. Just place it roughly here in the middle of your scene. I'm gonna scale down even more. I'm gonna go Control A and apply to scale. Right click and go Shade Smooth. We're then gonna to go to our modifiers. We're gonna go add modifier. We're gonna search and get a displace, right? And then we click new and let's go to our texture properties and let's come to the type and make a cloud. And let's take the size and I think we wanna bring it down. So let's make it 0.02. Okay, 0.02 works good. And let's go over to our modifiers and let's bring that strength way down like that. Now we do want this to kind of change a little bit. So how are we gonna do that? So the way we're gonna do that is by actually coming over here to frame one and let's give it a value of 0 0.06 and click on here to add an animate property. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over here 
to this little tab and let's change this for now to our graph editor. And let's click here on the strength displace. You can see it's active. And then over here, you should be able to see modifiers. Click on that, add modifier and then add noise to this. Now you're gonna see this is what we have, but that's crazy um, fast. So what we're gonna to do to change that, we're gonna actually come here to the scale and make it 21. And now that's gonna look a lot slower, okay? But we can also take this maybe down a bit. We can also try that and rather take the strength down to something like 0.5. Okay, so you can, you can mess around with this as much as you want until you kind of get something that you like. Okay, so something like that looks pretty cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and click on add modifier. Let's just go search and give this a sub, get a subdivision surface. And um, I wonder if that's gonna really add anything to it. Um, maybe let's just take the strength over here, make it one. Okay, I might take the scale down to 12. Just mess around with it too, you get something that you like. Okay, I'm gonna go with that, that looks really cool. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over back over here. Let's go back to our timeline. Let's go drag this down and let's click on this object here. And um, you can move it wherever you want. So I'm gonna move it just about here. And let's go to our materials. Let's just click a new and let's just call this light. And you can make whatever color you want. You can make it blue, orange. I'm gonna go with kind of like an orangey kind of warm color. And I'm gonna give it a, okay, so I should have made this an emission. So click on the surface and just type an E, M and get an emission, right? And then you can change the color to kind of like a bright orange. And let's make the strength something like 50 for now. And let's go Z and let's go rendered. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. But later on, we are gonna add some glowing to this in the compositor. So it's gonna look a lot better eventually. Um, but on top of this, we can also now go Shift A and we can add in some point lights and we can go move them in here. Okay, so add in the point lights. Let's increase the radius a little bit and let's give them kind of like an orangey yellow color and let's see what they look like. I'm gonna go over here, put a place them behind here. Shift D to duplicate, move on behind here. Shift D to duplicate, maybe bring it one up here. Just kind of getting this nice warm room lighting on here. And we can grab this guy here and change the color a little bit till we just find it just right. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. And let's also go Shift A, let's just add in an area light. G to move it over, R to rotate it in. I'm gonna give this a strength of 1,200. I'm gonna increase the size way up. And I'm gonna go Z, go rendered. And I might just give it a slightly warmish kind of color. And then also bring the strength maybe down to 700 for now. And I think that's looking pretty cool. Um, so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna go ahead and save. And now what we're gonna do is add our grass. Now, this is where you are gonna have to go into the description below and I'm gonna have a link to one of my YouTube videos where I cover how to add to Blender 4.0 the Biome Reader with a free plant library. So yes, I know it is an extra thing that you have to do, but believe me when I tell you it's worth it because once you have this add-on, which I'll show you step-by-step -step in the video in the description below how to install, it's gonna make your Blender workflow so much better with super realistic instant grass and plants. So um, you're gonna click on the biome reader. Once again, if you don't know what's happening here, the video for that is in the description. It's gonna show you how to get this biome reader. And once you have it, you're gonna click on the little eyedropper and you're gonna select your grass plane. So this big plane that we have here, okay? Make sure you select the plane, you go control A and also apply to scale, that's important. And then we're gonna click on open biomes. And then we're gonna to go to the plant library, the old one over here. And then we're gonna go down to Autumn 07, click on that. And now it's added in everything we need over here, which is looking really cool. But what I'm gonna recommend we do is we're gonna to go to the Autumn leaves. 
We're going to take the density of that down to 12. We're going to go to the autumn bush. We're going to make that four. And let's go to the autumn bush fall. Let's make that 12. And the autumn leaves be, let's just make that two. And then we want to scatter this in a different way. So I'm just going to close this um, window here for now. So we want this to only be distributed in a certain area. So let's go over to our white painting. Let's just turn the autumn off here for now in the viewport. And let's go over to our object data properties. Let's create a vertex group. And now let's come here and just paint where we want it to be. So for me, I'm going to go into my camera view and I'm just going to paint anywhere where I can see in the camera view like so, and then just paint behind it. So anywhere where the camera is going to see at any point, make sure to paint it in and getting rid of it where it's not going to be. So something like this, I'm going to look at my camera view and I can already see, I don't need this area right under here. Just trying to be as efficient as possible. Okay, now let's go into our camera view, go to frame one, and let's see. Okay, over here, it's a little bit exposed, so we need to paint it in over here towards the end. But more or less, we've got all of that. So now let's go back into our object mode. Let's turn the autumn leaves back on. And then now we were back over here. Um, I think what we just need to do is click on the autumn 07 and then click on vertex group here. Then click on here and get that group that we painted. And if it's inverted, just flip this thing over here so it's the right way around. So now in our camera view, this is what we're gonna see, okay? And that's looking really awesome. So make sure to save. And before we give this a quick test render, let's just select our ground. And let's just go back to our properties and under our autumn leaves here, let's just take some of these. And let's just take their scale down to 0.5 on each one of these. So I'm gonna just go down to 0.5, just to make them all a little bit smaller. 0.5. Okay, and this one, 0.5. Here we go. And what we're also gonna do is maybe just grab the autumn leaves here and just bump the density up to 20. And then we wanna go over here and just open up another window. Let's come to the drop down here and get the asset browser. And if you have the biome reader, you should be able to go and go to the plant library legacy. Once again, all of this will make sense if you watch the video in the description below. And then you're gonna click on the unassigned and you're gonna see all of these different assets here that come with the plant library. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down and just grab one of these dirt ones. And I'm just gonna maybe grab this one over here and just drag it onto the floor. And now let's just close this window. And um, I think what I might actually do, I'm gonna select the ground over here. And I go to my properties, and you guys can keep this one if you want. But for me, I'm just gonna actually grow to the Automo 07 and just get rid of it. And the reason I wanna do that, I'm also gonna grab the Geo Scatter here and just delete that. And delete all the stuff to do with the Geo Scatter. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna select the ground again, and I'm just gonna to go to my um, Biome Reader. The plane is already selected. If it's not, just make sure to select it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go open biomes. And by the way, this is good for you guys to kind of see if you wanted to change things. And scrolling down, I'll keep scrolling down. And then you can see we have a forest 07 that has some rocks, but don't confuse that with the forest 07 up here that has trees. So we wanna go down to the forest 07 that has these rocks here as well and click on forest 07. And then with forest 07 selected, let's just go down and click on vertex groups. And let's select that group we created earlier and flip it around. Okay, now it's only a matter of having to grab some of these things and just lowering the density. So I'll take the dead leaves down to 20. These ones I'll leave as they are. Maybe take the density of the forest seedlings down to 30. And uh, some of these other things we can take down a little bit as well. But the idea here now is to make sure we save. Okay, and let's just go into our viewport. Let's save, and I'm just gonna close this here for now. Make sure to save, and let's go render and just do a test render. And here you guys can see this is what it's looking like so far. So pretty cool, and we can always adjust these parameters for the rocks and grass later on, but you guys kinda see where we're heading with this. So I'm gonna call it done for part two. 
In the next part, we'll really refine things a little bit and then eventually get into our compositing where we're really gonna make this look awesome and then we can eventually render it out as a final animation. So I'll see you guys in part three.